Now, when I when I find out that you, when you guys find out that you can do this, it doesn't take you long. It's got, it should take you more than 10, 15 minutes to do this. And yet, I've got black belts that have been with me for 10 years that can't get up to four or five. Paul, can you do this? No. This right there, though. Shows you. Copy them, guys. Ichi, ni, san, chi, go, roku, sichi, hashi, ku, ju. Write them. Just, just, just practice doing them. See how many you can do. David, how are you? You're getting grayer. Yeah. Yeah, we are. <coughs> Sorry for being late. Oh, that's okay. <coughs> Hi, buddy. You are? You are? Yeah. Oh, I, I hear it's contagious. Are they? I don't know. <laughs> I heard a lot of people have it. What, the tires? <laughs> Stop for a second. Okay, now this symbol, here, this is nine, okay, and, or uh, that would be cool. Now the way that's done is this is actually two strokes. So what you're doing, you're coming down one, and this this is two. Okay. Hello. Okay. If you ever saw this character, and I went this way, that's the symbol for power or chitaro. That's the, that's what that means. Okay. So the only difference is the tail goes here on, on Ku, in Chikaro it comes inward. Okay? 
Now, on a lot of your characters, when they're like, let's say, go, five, you have one stroke, two, <coughs> three, four. That works? Okay. Right now, you can just, you know, just copy or whatever. I just want you guys to be able to copy. But <coughs> as you guys start working the radicals and things, like on the, I think it's on the six kilo tape, or the, or the uh, <coughs> seven, I'm not sure which one it is, where I've, I've got a lot of those character identifications. You're making the, the uh, radicals. How do you know which stroke comes first and how many count they are? Well, you're gonna you have a list, uh, like in that one workbook that I have for your students. That's those things are made so that you can run copies, and then they can add that to a three-man binder. <coughs> there are uh, brush strokes. What is it? 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 26, 26 brush strokes. Have. You'll learn to recognize the stroke. Is it open top to bottom, or is it a different look? To well, each stroke can be different. Each one always starts from the left, and always starts with what they call mother dot. And from there, then you'll learn to recognize the strokes. Yeah, Glob is the starting one. Glob is a start. But yeah, the, the, the mother dot is always a start. But as time goes on, there's about 26 strokes you'll, you'll recognize. And from that, then you're going to be able to see the stroke itself. So you'd like to know this is just one stroke. That's because I, I know that that I recognize the stroke. That's the trick about reading a dictionary uh, and learning to count what's called uh, brush strokes with a radical, be able to look up what they mean. Uh, this is something you cover later. Right now, I just want you guys just to write these one at hand. You guys got them? Yeah. All right, we're going to have a test. Okay. Well, look at them again, guys. I know it's really tough. You guys come into martial arts school to kick and punch. And this is a tough part of things. Some of you guys, depending on the way that your brain prefers to work, will really get into it. Okay, I probably to where somebody will be kicking you going, I don't want to work with brush. I've got some of my students that they work brush. I mean, who would rather work brush than other things? Okay, so what do I have to make them do? The other things. Okay, they gotta, they gotta work kumite things. Okay, so you gotta keep up on everything. Okay, but why the counting one to ten is gonna be mainly important? Okay, because when you guys start getting your certificates for Kosho, they're going to be in Japanese. Right? You want to know what date you got your rank in. Okay? And those, those numbers, you're going to see, and you're going to see a date. Okay. But isn't 
this the fourth year now that I'm emperor? Yes. Okay, because I, I think I might have put San on us. We did what I just did. That should have been Chi. So you guys will learn to give a redate. So then the other two, there's a couple other characters we're going to get before the weekend, and that's Sun and Moon. What does that tell you the difference between a month and a day? Okay, now, I want to explain. I'm going to go over a class in more than one hour, <coughs> and I'm going to work you guys on the segment of, uh, and here we have Atemi, Nage, and Giri. And you might have, uh, you might already be doing this, Mike, on you. It's really hyper. You know, always, always ahead of things. Check guys out. That, put the notebooks down a second. Okay. Terminology, and uh, I want you guys to learn to use. If I use the term OK, it uh, means what? A seminar going on. OK means block. If I use the term OK me, <coughs> OK me is what? Okay, bye. What is it? Rolling, <coughs> rolling, falling. Okay. Rolling, okay? So ukemi is falling. Uke is blocking. All right, so what I do in, in my classes in my dojo, a lot of times I work a half hour segment, but I work it off of a, a blocking maneuver. So if I use the term um, ono no, ono no uke waza, what am I saying? Female blocking. Female blocking would be a soft block. Now what I'll do is I'll take a segment of a block and I'll roll it into a stripe, and then so I have a half hour where they're working blocking maneuver, or maybe a blocking maneuver with an antemi. Next half hour will be the same blocking maneuver. Now we translate into nage. Next will be the same blocking maneuver to set up for getting. Getting means what? Kicking. Okay. You see how that works? Okay, so then what happens, the student will start learning to see how everything can translate into something else. Our brain has a tendency that when we, when we kick it in, we, have a, we, we want a nice, comfortable world, so we don't want to deal with other stuff, so to speak. Okay, that's it, Mike? Okay. Let's work, we're going to work, first of all, let's work a, a uh, blocking maneuver. Okay, punch. Okay, we're going to work this. It's one of my all-time faves. Okay, so but what we're going to do now is we're going to work the okay. But what we're going to do is bring the hand over and we're going to pull his arm back. So we're going to block with the left hand. One, shoot it over and roll it back. Okay, so you're just using your pinky there. Okay, all right, everybody got that move? Okay, now the, the factors that we have to take in consideration are moving here where one is we're going to lean to the right. Punch there, that veers the guy's strike over to the center slightly. Left hand, right hand comes over, pull it back, okay? All right, so all you're doing is the, the wrist has to relax. And when we get in a cut, then maybe we'll, we'll break something like that on again. Right, ready? One, two, pull. Okay? All right, wrist is relaxed. Relax the wrist in here, you guys. For some reason, Californians do this better than anybody else. <laughs> I can't figure it out, okay? All right, so one, two, okay? That's it. Again, ready? One, two. Okay, now, let's take it, punch. Take the punch, one, and hook it. Hook it in. Okay? Now, your left hand, I want you to place right at the person's hip. Right here. Okay? Just place it there. And relax. Relax. Okay? Become a one, two. Okay? Just center. Okay? Everybody, go ahead and cut off. This is the regular edition. That's regular edition. That's the same one. Huh? Yeah, they're uh, 79 advertising. Yeah. Oh, good. Number 200 there. That's a nice page. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I didn't have a heart. You can do it either. That looks good. It's the same thing. That's good.
Soften it up, guys. Soften it up. Make it nice and soft. Relax. Okay. Are you made back? Okay. Want to know what it was? This time we're going to press outward slightly. This time the palm comes in and we're doing this. Okay. So your difference is, you guys, when you're doing this, relax it. See, see, I'm taking the arm slowly. The hands going to one, two. The pinkies use. I'm using the pinky. Now the purpose of this is to draw because as he throws a left, you got to draw. See, and that way I can strike right to the draw and hit again. Okay. So what are you doing? Second motion, you're patting him here by rotating the wrist outward. Now what have we done to him? Now he's behind it. Now we're behind him. Okay. So the difference is, is from taking the, the finger and going in, and taking the palm and pushing out. Palm strike is called a what? Stretch the hands. Shota, okay. Shota, Shota. That's a palm strike. Okay, I just decided to throw it at you. Okay. All right. So we're coming one, two, roll it all the way around. So now this is what we should have. Okay. So now the palm can either come here or here. Purpose is, is as you guys start working your blocking maneuver, if you set it in your head, the one block is just a block, and now realizing a small rotation with a hand or the feet changes everything else, then what are you doing to yourself? You're limiting yourself, okay? But if you can experiment with every single thing and see all these different variables, to diffuse the wrist, so as he punches, one, two, see? So you're coming here from the palm to the thumb. That should place you here. Now, you're going to get a little bit different effect from each person. Why? Nobody throws a punch the same twice. Or not everybody throws the same punch. So learn to see how a small motion with the hand or the wrist can change that, okay? So now, from, instead of the pinky, now we're going to go here. Go ahead, okay? Good to see you, David. Good to see you. <clears throat> Real good to see you. Oh, we've seen a lot of each other. Here Seems like it, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, more this year than last. Yeah. And you know, you're coming out to my dojo probably about the following month in March. March, right. Okay. <laughs> so. You're out in Chicago, aren't you? Uh, close to I'm going to have you guys give these guys a little bit of a shot on some of the sports book we took uh, today, so I'm going to have you guys um, explain it. The problem with, with doing this is because I'm breaking these down into segments. You know how you and I have a tendency to go just keep it down. Are you
So now you're going to take this and align it here. See, that way you can move right to the inside of the guy, too. Okay? So watch again. So first one we did is this. Second one we did was this. Third one, we're doing this. So we're just bringing it right here to the bicep. Mm -hmm. You guys understand what you're doing with the right hand? Okay? Strike. I had uh, somebody suggested what I call this type of stuff a long time ago, so I decided I started calling it uh, puppet master techniques. Okay? It works real well. Okay? <laughs> works real good. Okay? So what you're doing is taking the hand, one, two, and pressing to the inside of the bicep. Now I'm making it tighter in there. Okay? So from there you have this point. See? You bring the hand up underneath, now you got an elbow shot. So if I went all the way around with a hand, one, two, bang, boom, boom, in. See what you got? Now, key. Relax. Okay? Alright? Got it? So, punch. You hear him? One, two. So that comes next, see? Because if he's pulling that back to punch, all you do is take your finger and go up. See where he's at now? Okay? Got it? So one, two, three, boom, here. Okay, go ahead. But let it relax the wrist. Relax. All relax. Relax. Can you relax? Yeah. 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 You're, when you're punching, you relax. Okay. You guys both pull? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, both you guys relax. Take a value. So when you're here, see. Just that, just, just that much. No. No, see. So when you're here, it's going to be pain. So the idea, see, is that left punch, is this, is this one is left, that's coming back. So once you're here, boom, boom. Hey, David, you know the only problem, keep going while I talk. You know the only problem with uh, Fernando? <laughs> Yeah. Did you notice that? Oh, yeah. Everything's with rhythms and no, no, drums. No, 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 I don't mean that. I don't mean yeah, that. You, you can't see the business in it. Oh. And so you don't know, have a problem with no. it. Oh. Somebody's got to break his instrument. I'll tell you, there's a bunch of stuff. Oh, I love that. Do you feel that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a sweet, sweet person. He's a good martial artist. Yeah, oh, no. I said, well, I saw, I could see some of the sweet things. Very good punch. Here's the sad stuff. 12, 13 years in Hupton. Yeah, do that again. He'd be the guy being the airport. He's done that before. I bet he is. He's done that before. So he said there was an album, right? Yeah. Here, I'll bother myself for it.
don't be one dimensional here. I mean, you don't go, I blocked, now I'm going to hit. If I block here and I'm going to hit him from here, look at the distance it takes my body to move to be able to hit him. Who has the advantage? He does. He does. This is already past tense. You see, I've got to wind all the way from here and he's going to come across. You, you understand? But this hand here, the one that's already made the contact, can give me the time to even direct my punch from here, see? Because as he starts to throw his left, see? What does that do? That changes. That gives me this distance now. Wow. Okay? So, <clears throat> your female blocking is going to help you set up your counters. So by using different parts of the hand, you're going to get a different effect. Okay? Once there's a contact point between here and here, I can manipulate what I want on his body. That's the purpose of doing these blocking drills. You understand? Okay? Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to have you do now, this is for yourself. Okay? It's a wake-up call. Once you're here, <clears throat> I'm just going to show you a couple of things. you got one, you've got the press, you got here, you got here, you got here, here. Okay? I want you now, you got this, to work different effects from the, from the right hand. You understand? So just experiment with it. So if he's punching and you come here, now you do this. Now the hand is here. So as he goes to punch again, I go boom, thump, and hit. What happens? He's going to run right into it, see? But what gave me that effect was just taking a thump, punch. Okay? <coughs> go, do it. Just experiment a little bit with it. <coughs> Slow. Do it very slow. The problem is you made up your mind what you're going to do ahead of time. So now as you start to turn press. Okay. 
because now you're working with the inside of the stance this way. So you got to remember, a karate stance is good here, but you come two inches here, it's no longer a karate stance. So, punch. So if you're here in this posture, and you want to manipulate and make this soft now, okay? Okay? I get stiff now. Just get a good base, right? What about now? Where's your base now? Okay? Karate stance is not an immovable stance. It's all full. It's just, just as weak. You just got to know, how, know where it's weak at. That sometimes is a good base. Get a real strong stance sometimes. You'll, you'll see karate go, <clears throat> well, Bruce Lee did that. You know what he did as a guy in a television thing? China, some guy was talking about his immovable stance. <coughs> well, Lee hit him. He says, I don't push, I hit. Uh, anytime there's a stance or someone is in a hard stance, move your body. Move your body. Okay. Where you see where you're going to make it weak. Okay. Find out weak points. And that guy will be just as soft as you want him to be. Okay. Understand? So what we're doing is we're taking our we're taking our, our center away just enough to make him lose weight. Okay. Go ahead. One, two, three. Okay. Am I moving my hand? Uh, hands to here. See. You guys can get good at that. Okay. You'd be bad. Now, let me explain a, a concept. <coughs> Term Jodan means what? I don't know. <coughs> Upper. Upper. Sagan. I love it. Chuda. Okay. Get up. Lower. If you're dealing with an opponent, most people <coughs> from a certain distance deal from the Sagan and Jodan level. Always set your counters to an opponent who's dealing from Sagan and Jodan from the Gedan level. You guys understand? Or lower Chuda. In other words, if he's my hands are here and he punches me. The feet are going to set my hands up, and okay, not my hands. Because watch, if he punches, and I go, <coughs> see, he's going to see that and he's going to maneuver. But if he's here and he punches, and I'm coming here, you see, he's not going to see that. You guys understand? Same thing with sword play. If you're going to work a guy, okay, you feel that? 
Well, what's doing it to you? No, it's not. What's it doing it, guys? What? The feet. See? That's fine. So if you're here, I want you to see. So that, that's going to place you on any position or posture you want. So a lot of times you, you take your feet and you move them. So. See, he's less likely then going to be able to scramble away from my hands. So if I'm going to punch a guy and he's here, punch. Okay, that's cool. See, what's doing it is what? The feet. It's not the hand. <coughs> he punches. It's all right there. Okay, now. Okay. So remember that. If you're working kendo, same stuff. They probably won't do it though. Once you start studying kosho, you just, you know, once you're underneath, once you get the hakama out, you know, just get a long hakama. You'd be shocked what you'll do to those suckers. They won't relate. But don't tell them. Just do it. Okay? You'll be all over them. Okay? Understand? Segan, Jodan. Chudan, Gedan. If you're working with students on showing blocking maneuvers, make sure they're having troubles with their hands. It might be because what they're doing is using their arms instead of their body. Okay, so you work, get on level. What's the most important thing to benefit a kick? Upper body. The most important thing to benefit the hands? Footwork. Right? Good boxer is, does not have good footwork, he's not going to be a good boxer. There's only, uh, the only exceptions I know to that in the boxing world would have been Norton. Norton had terrible footwork. He just had a guy left his arm. That was about it. Okay? Understand. Okay? Two more minutes. Go ahead. I'm going to break. You want to do something else? Mm -hmm. This way? Yeah. yeah. It's just one. Driving. So, 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 no, I just move my feet. So if he's punching and I'm here. So whether I'm coming to fight this, I have my hand. Okay, so just guide me around. This is here now. Once you start doing it, it doesn't matter where you be. The hands are going to go in your center no matter where you go. So it's kind of just doing this side, that side, that side. And you're rooting that. Okay. Okay. Start, start out or what? Start out this way and then you have turn that. Just turn it quick. Put your pedal in the metal and it doesn't matter what happens. I see him do it on the tape. I, just, I couldn't pick it up on the tape. You know what you're doing? You, 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 once you stop relating to your brain, can you just start going? Yeah, you look pretty yeah. old. Yeah. Right now. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think it's going to be a good thing. I don't think
I didn't know what was happening. Oh, well. Like a, like a All right, guys, you may stop. Okay, let's cover something now that's that uh, you guys haven't seen. That I would, I would like you guys to do. And this is for, uh, for etiquette purposes. So one of the most embarrassing things that you see in martial arts is when you go to a martial arts dojo and you see absolutely no understanding of etiquette. And uh, in Reishiki, so we're gonna, right now we're going to spend a few minutes bowing and doing all that kind of stuff so that we know how to do this. Um, especially in the Kemper worlds. The Kemper worlds are a mess. Um, they don't have etiquette. You know Gitlin? You see from Gitlin? Uh, Sigon Gitlin now. Uh, I did a class for him in, in uh, the Bay Area. And man, well, I, I asked Art, I said, would you please show me your, your method of bowing? Uh, of, uh, oh, yeah, it's Chinese. It's got the gong. You know, it, it's got the, the uh, he's really into it. Man. They're wow, you know. They're, Missed and everything, <laughs> something else. But um, what it does is shows you informity and shows some class. Uh, also, the the basis of etiquette. First of all, I want to explain some things too. There is a lot of in, in the Japanese culture. There's a lot of, of uh, uh, things that they will do that stems back to like the Shinto, the, the days of Shinto in, in Japan and so on. And then you had much of the culture adapted in the Buddhist ways and so on, and Christianity as well. And there's a blending there, just like we have in our culture. Um, for instance, somebody was talking to me about Mikosi Sensei, and I think I brought this up, that, that uh, he was Buddhist, the head of a temple. He became a Presbyterian and Mormon, and he was very Catholic. Now, once I discovered what that temple's all about, I understand totally, because that temple at one time embraced Christianity. I think, I, you know, so so you have intermixing of cultural practices in, in all of them. The Korean wears a gi. They might call it a dobak, but it's a gi. It didn't come from Korea. It came from Japan. Now it comes from home. <laughs> okay? You were talking about the inconsistencies with Korean. Well, you know, so I want to cover this with you. So what? Uh, two ways of bowing. And they, they're different. They're going to vary. In EI, <coughs> EIDO, you have different methods depending upon the school of EI that you do. The way that we would uh, adapt to this is a certain way of bowing. So no knows that you don't do it in a dojo. One is you never, you never want to lean up against the wall. Okay. Now a lot of the seminars I do, we will not practice as much etiquette because the main purpose is to do what? Get a lot of information out. Then you guys work it. Never show the bottom of your feet. <coughs> never do that. That's bad. Okay, not only in the Japanese culture, but in, in uh, uh, most of them, isn't that true? Oriental culture. Most of the Oriental uh, culture you don't. Why? Dirty. Dirty. What do most of the people in the Orient do? Where are they working? Fields. Fields. What kind of fields? What, what's, what's in the rice paddy field? Fertilizer. <laughs> what kind of fertilizer? And what else? Human, especially in Japan. Okay, so these, these are just cultural things. So let's say when you ever had a Japanese teacher, or, or and some of them don't do, or say Indonesian. Indonesian art, you never do what? Never touch anybody with your left hand. Why is that? Sanitary. It's, it's, very, it's not sanitary at all. The right hand is you eat with you something else with your left. Yes? And um, so. So let, let's let's take. I want all you guys to get a a uh, how about the tantos or just get a weapon, okay? And we're going to pretend that is a sword. And I want you guys just to know this. 
is a little bit different if you're doing uh, a weapon. Up. Let's say we're not buying the comings up. It's done the blade me. Keep facing out. One, two. Stretch up. Arm. 
arm. Walking in front of somebody, what do you do? Right hand comes forward. Okay. If you have the blade like this, okay, you're okay. You just you just bow around and walk around. Any questions? Nope. Very simple. Pretty simple. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you're coming into a class. Once you have Tommy on, this is this is what this does to it. Helps order in the dojo. You guys are done uh, getting dressed, your dress room. I would not tie your OB until you come in. Wherever Kamiza is or <coughs> wherever uh, you're here, have your OB folded up. That's your belt. Says up. Boom, place it in front. Boom, bow to the belt. Put it on. It's taking time to think about your training. So if you just come in and work out. What that will do is other students are going to get more of a drift that this is a place to study <coughs> and working, you know. You know what I'm saying? Any of you guys ever see students that just come in and any of you guys ever just come in and just like, Hey Mike, how are you man? Anybody ever had a problem? I do all the time. Always somebody in my face. So, this kind of thing will help control that so everybody comes in to work. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Alright. Okay. Next. Kata. <coughs> this all worked in the equal form. I'm going to work the same form, and now I'm going to show you guys something on this. You got to put the books up. Juni Ipo, the densho, the kata comes from whom? How did it come into the kai? Robert Trias. Robert Trias. Um, Trias had studied this form, learned it from Yoshiro Konishi, which was his teacher. Um, and Konishi. Um, <coughs> Learn this form from a first by the name of Chibana. Chibana, problem was, is Konishi's top guy, and the Chibana was where they didn't kind of quite get along, but they exchanged things, you know. Trees was in Hawaii, he actually showed this form to him, and he told us he did it. Uh, well, about six, seven months before Trees died, he asked me to preserve the form in the room. I said, okay. And so uh, that's why we do it. Yes. Is it because they don't do it no more? Yeah, because it, when, when he became the head of Shuri Group, he can no longer do Jun Ipo. Uh, just like the Nekobudos, <coughs> who are also today by the Shuri Gojun people called Kurumpa. Some call it one Kurumpa. Those are actually composite forms. Now, so I've seen two forms of Kurumpa Kata. Some of them are the identical ones, which was anybody. Shuri Gojun is still out here, isn't it? Yeah. Shuri Gojun is still out here, And they do do the Jun Ipo form. They do Jun Ipo. They do Shuri Gojun. The same, same Jun Ipos that I got here. The same one. Who, who does it now? Shuri Goju? Shuri Ru, down here in the now the scene. You're kidding me. No. Well, see, that might have been uh, shortly before Trias then took that out, because they had to have been a play with Trias. But then when Trias became, when Konishi died, and turned the, the Ru over to Trias. See, Trias is also the founder of Shuri Goju. Anybody ever heard of that song? That system? That's still in Chicago? Yeah. And where that came from was Trias. Did you know that? <coughs> I know it was pretty big up there. It was pretty big up there. Now, when Trias first came here, his system, he called it Shri Goju, and when he did it, combined Shri Ru. <coughs> okay, and it was actually it's more than American, but it's classical Okinawan. But when Trias became the head of Shri Ru, and his direction was that, then he had to leave a lot of other things out. See, Trias was a notorious student. Never stopped learning the arts, no matter what. His vocabulary, uh, matter of fact, I did a, uh, Art Kaplan gave me a tape of Trias explaining all of the kata uh, when he was in his pinnacle. I mean, actually got his voice on tape uh, explaining the history of all of them. But Trias made a habit of studying all these things when he came to the United States. There was no real formation of Okinawan arts and no, no power structure. I would say the one that had the know-how of doing that was Trias more so than the Okinawans. So, <coughs> Journey Evil today is done here. Now, the Bunkai is not nowhere near the Okinawan. So the guy that you're talking about is probably Trias. I have no idea. I, I know some students from there, and I mentioned the Jun Ipo form. They did the same form. They did the same. Did you go over them with them? The same, same stuff, huh? Okay. 
Now, here's some of the differences. One, we never cross our center line. So, we have to loosen up the feet. When you're, when you're doing this, you see this? You notice I haven't, I, I haven't done this. I'm not doing this. Looks like that, but I'm not doing it. When you first start off a student, I don't care when a student comes in and he goes, that's cool. I mean, no, good, good. You're, okay, good, you got your stance back and you got your feet out. I'm happy with that right now. Later, then make sure that when he's drawn, see? You guys notice, did I cross my center? Uh-uh. But it looks like, it would look like that. Now from here, you're reaching out, you're grabbing, stepping. See, that hand is always center. Punch, okay? Step, punch. Step, punch. Open the hands, always snap the head on all the top, always snap, okay? Hand comes around, as it comes around, you let your body go with it, see? Punch. Punch, and snap the hand. Turn, do it to move. Okay. And your middle level block, you guys, don't bring it up here, down. Your contact point is something <coughs> that draws down. Okay. okay? Punch. Punch. Open the hand. Got the, got the head. Step. Position. Punch. One. Each knee. Punch down. Solar flex level. Okay? Three. From here, you're crossing around again. Boston Center doesn't take place. Turn. Yeah, man. <clears throat> okay, now, show Chikubai, <clears throat> we do, or the salutation, we do on all kata. One up, down, press out, form, back, out, before you start kata. Now, five ways of doing kata. One. <clears throat> And you change all forms. A kata is a builder. It, within everything, there is kata in everything that you do, first of all. But the keys to all your movement are in the katas. <coughs> if you learn how to change it, if you look at anything one-dimensional, you're never going to see all the other benefits. Okay, so you have to look at everything. One way of doing the form. <coughs> change and regulate things to breathing. I want power in one strike. <coughs> I want a one-strike power. What is it that I emphasize as far as stance then? One power hit. What kind of stance should I have? Wide? Wide base. Why? Okay. Right here, guys. Let's, let's step back here. One real wide base. Okay, now this is right from here. This is punch without stepping, okay? Boom. Okay. Breathing wise, what kind of a uh, uh, breathing technique are we going to use? Yeah. Yeah. Just the key eye. So we're here. One, ready, breathe. And now, solar plex breathing. Now, what we've done is by our base, we have eliminated the ability to tuck the box, tighten the abdomen. We can only tighten here. You've eliminated everything else. So a wide base is no good for doing hand combination or combination hitting. It's only good for one hit. So if a guy does karate and hits a whole bunch of combinations from a wide stance, the garbage. Why? He's going to have a poop in one punch. <laughs> so, ran out of gas, man. There's nothing there surging in, in, in to maintain the breathing. You guys understand? So we'll do our kata wide base. That's one way of doing it. So the junipo then is going to look like this. Now this is okay. This is okay to do this. Punch. Okay? Emphasis is on that. What you do is you explain to the student that what we're doing now is we're working breathing. What type of breathing is the key eye? So now the base is wide. So as a teacher, if I want, if my student's stance is not good, I make him do it this way. And then I make him relate to the kind of breathing. Okay? Open the end. Grab. Punch. Step punch. Step punch. <coughs> Step clear. Turn. Okay. Now, second way of doing copy is what we would call 
more of your Sanchen Dutch. <coughs> now, what kind of breathing corresponds with Sanchen Dutch? More of a Sanchen. Okay. Lower abdominal. Okay. You guys have notes? 